All right, welcome back to another video by Firestarter Graphics and Engineering. Today we're going to do something a little different. Now I know I say that each and every new video because every new video is a little different. So today we're going to be using Onzel Engineering Suite to do a parametric model of a screwdriver. Now my main goal with this is to take my SolidWorks training that I did last year and all the tutorials from there and translate them to Onzel Engineering Suite. This way anyone coming from any other solid modeler has an idea of how this one works and also if you're from SolidWorks you'll be able to see how this works. Now I am the type of engineer who I don't really care what software people use. I don't care if you use SketchUp, Blender, Tinkercad, Onzel, Inventor, Creo, Pro Engineer, Fusion, SolidWorks, whatever. I'm always about learning and also follow through. So if you can use one of those to create a project and then 3D print or somehow take that file and do something with it to create what you're intended to do, that's awesome. That is perfect and that's great. So for this video I will be discussing strictly parametric modeling and the follow through with that for Onzel Engineering. Okay, when you first install it and open it up, it's going to ask if you want to use the light theme or the dark theme. I choose the dark theme. Now, most of you have all your tabs across the top for your different workbenches. My Windows UI is set to 150% for scaling, and so it doesn't like that. So if you go to Edit, Preferences, you can go to Workbenches, Combo Box is what I use, left corner and you hit apply and OK you'll need to restart uh, Onzel Engineering Suite and then all your workbenches will be right here okay so once it's open you're gonna click parametric part sorry and I accidentally clicked to turn the grid on and I don't like the grid. Yours shouldn't show the grid like this, but mine does. Oh well, I'm not going to worry about it. So, with the parametric part, you have a body. The body is contains the sketches and all of the features that you're going to do. It's like taking a piece of clay and then cutting it and shaping it and adding to it to create something. So you have one solid piece of clay. Now, if you wanted the second object, you'd grab another piece of clay and sculpt that and either combine them or keep it separate. Onzel works the same way. If we want multiple solids, we need to create a second body. One single body or envelope cannot have multiple solids. It just does not like to play that way. Okay, so if I click on the body, it asks to do two things, either a boolean operation or create a sketch. Now, a boolean operation for all those that are new, this is like taking a block of wood and a drill press and putting that drill press at an angle and then drilling a hole and removing material from that wood block. A boolean operation is very similar in Onzel. You take a cube, you can put a cylinder, angle that cylinder, put it in any position, Go to Boolean Operations and hit Subtract, and it will put a hole right where that cylinder was. It's like using a drill to remove material. We're not going to worry about that today. Today we're going to worry about our actual project, which is not making pink and blue clouds, even though it's really cool. I just like the picture. We're going to make a screwdriver. So we're going to create a sketch. We're going to revolve said sketch, and then we're going to cut the tip and then cut the grips and then finish off with doing the fillets around it. Now the difference between a fillet and a chamfer, a chamfer removes material, a fillet adds material. Alright, so let's kind of get going here. So in today's video we're going to actually do the sketch and the revolution. Alright, so we're going to hit create sketch and on our planes we can either use the top plane, the front plane, or the right plane. I'm going with the front plane. Okay. So now that we're in the sketcher, 
we have all of our sketch tools. We have dimension tools. We have some constrain horizontal and vertical tools. Constraining just means gluing whatever geometry we have down to that place, making it glued, so to speak, just right there. So, for example, I'm going to hit G and L for geometry line. And our first line is going to be five and a half inches in length. I'm going to hover over this blue axis, this red axis, so it snaps. And I'm in millimeters, so let's change that. Bottom right hand corner, I'm going to click that and go to US Customary. Geometry line. Okay, now we're in inches. I'm going to type in 5.5. I'm going to hit enter. For the degrees, we're just going to hit zero and then enter. Notice the line is green. That means it is constrained and glued in place. So we can't move it. Shows that it's five and a half inches in length. That's perfect. So let's look with the next line that we need to do. We're going to draw this one that's uh, 0.1 inches, and then draw this one that's 3.25 inches, and then this one which is 0.325 going up. We're just going to make kind of a, a rectangular profile, and then just like clay, just kind of start shaping it out. So let's go back. All right, so geometry line. I'm going to go up 0 0.1 inches, 90 degrees. And you do have to type it if you, if it's default to the 90 and hit enter, it doesn't accept it for some reason. When I'm screen recording, it does not. It may work for you guys. I don't know, screen recording sometimes can do funky things. Okay. Now we're going to draw another line, and it's going to be 3.25 inches in length. We want 0 degrees. Right click gets rid of the line. Now, if your navigation mode is set to Blender, if you hover over it, it'll tell you what your operations are. So, Shift plus the middle mouse button drags. Middle, uh, the wheel zooms in and out. Middle mouse button rotates. Okay, now that we're off skew, let's go ahead and click top right here to put it normal. Okay, now geometry line or GL, and we're going to do 0 0.325 inches at 90 degrees. And there we go. And we're going to draw this line. Um, we're going to go 2.5 inches in length at negative 180. Okay. Then we're going to click. Make sure your little vertex goes blue. And we're going to go up 0 0.3 inches at 90 degrees. Now we just need to trim some things down. The trim tool right here. You have trim edge, split edge, or extend. We want trim. And we're going to click here. And we're going to click right there. Now everything's nice and squared up. So we have this rectangular profile. So we're getting pretty close. Let's see what we need to do. Okay, we need to zoom in a little bit so we can see. We want to add a fillet here and here, here, and then this large one. So we can add this one and this large one but we need to draw this arc in here first before we can do this fillet and that fillet. So let's start with this one, a radius of 0.25 inches. Now, bear in mind I am at my home studio, so you may hear my phone ring because I'm expecting a call. If you do, no worries. Or you might hear my animals making noise, or my wife doing something in the kitchen, or doing her own projects. So, okay, fillet right here. Create fillet. So you're going to click on a line, and then the, it's hard to see the other line. There we go. Now we actually need to dimension it. So click the dimension tool, bring it out. Notice the inches quotation is there, and we wanted, I already forgot, but I think it's 0 0.3. Nope, 0 0.25. 0 0.25, hit enter, and we're golden. Okay, let's come over here. We're going to click, that's the dimension tool. Sorry, let's grab the fillet here to here. Now use the dimension tool. Notice it says thousandths. 
So we want 0 0.05 inches. So you can erase thousandths and either do your quotation marks or just type in IN for inches and hit enter. But notice it now brings up 50 thousandths. That's fine. Sometimes it does this, sometimes it actually leaves it as the 0 0.05. So, all right, I think we have what we need. Okay, let's do this fillet right here or this arc. It needs to be 1.85 from the right hand side and 0.45 up. Easiest way is to drop a vertex or a point right here, dimension it, and base your arc off of that. So grab this little dot and uh, we're gonna, let's just, um, right there. Okay, click the dimension tool, whoops. Dimension, and we want it dimensioned off of here and it needs to be 0 0.45, so I was pretty close. Okay, right click to get rid of dimension tool, click on the little arrow. We wanna do constrain horizontal distance. And that's supposed to be 1.85, we were pretty close, hit enter. Okay, now click on your arc, center and end points. Click the vertex or the point then click anywhere on this line, draw your arc, connect it. Grab the dimension tool, click the arc, drag it out, 0 0.30, hit enter, it now dimensions it correctly. So we could try and fill it, sometimes I try to fill it here and here, but you'll notice it deletes the line. So we need to trim the line first. Just click it. Now you'll notice that green went away. This means it's not constrained, so I could lift it up. It's not glued. I'm not going to worry about fully constraining it right now. It could be a little tricky sometimes to fully constrain. If I'm not going to mess with anything later on, and it's a quick part, I don't need to fully constrain it. Now, if you are going to mess with things later on and change stuff, it's highly recommended to fully constrain. Now, for you guys, I would try practicing to fully constrain it. As of right now, this model does not need it. So, fillet tool, here, here, dimension. Where'd my dimension tool go? And it needs to be 50. Something, I moved something, yep. Notice, okay. Something moved, and I noticed it, it was a little, okay. We're gonna redo that one again. This line had moved up a little bit. Notice it moved down when we constrain it. I mean, when we dimensioned it. So, what I'm going to do is take this constrain horizontal and click it. So now that line is horizontal. And that's what we want. Okay. All right. Last fillet. Where are you going? Okay, right here and here. Dimension. That should be 50. Whoops. Okay. Now we should be golden and good to go. Still horizontal, horizontal. Okay. Go ahead and hit close. And now we have this profile. I really want to get rid of this grid and I do not remember how to get rid of that. Give me a second. Is it view? Maybe. Okay, I'm going to put this on pause for a second. Okay, I'm back. Figured out how to do it. It's um, kind of interesting. I had to go to the draft workbench and hit GR for geometry grid. So it turns it on and off and then switch back to the part design. Okay, so now that we have our sketch, I'm gonna highlight it. We are almost done for this video. So click the sketch and the next thing we wanna do is click revolve or revolution. And that is not at all what we wanted because it's rotating around the 
space axis the green axis. So we want it to rotate around the x axis. So come over here, base x axis, and hit OK. All right. So there we go. We have our basic screwdriver profile now. So, OK. That's all for today's video. I hope you guys learned something. Basic tutorial, not too bad. Looks pretty good. And if you wanted to, you could call this done. You could, you know, export it as, you know, you could do, you could click on the revolution. See if we minimize body, see everything's inside that. And inside the revolution is our sketch. So if we edit the sketch, the revolution will change. So if you wanted to, you could export this as a 3MF for 3D printing or a step file to send to someone. Most slicers are now opening up step files instead of STLs. So that's pretty handy. Anyway, but yeah, there we go. So next video will show how to make the last two cuts and do the fillets. Anyways, thank you for watching and hope you guys have a great day.